Okay, Sam. Go that way. Um, what is the most important service that we can offer our patients? The most important service is? Just being, listening to them. The, that's great. Sex the, therapy. Sex therapy for Jimmy. He no longer has a license. All right. <laughs> most important service we can offer a patient is? And nothing, there's no wrong answer. There's no wrong answer. Being present. Any idea? Orientation. 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 How about yourself? Education. 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 So that's what we have to ask ourselves on Monday morning. Seriously, I want to try and make a difference in at least one person's life that I might pass on some information that I have in my 30 years of practice that it might do something that is helpful for someone. I want to leave, and I'm going to try not to get too wordy and lose the main thought, but um, there's definitely something specific that I've concentrated on, that my wife has concentrated on. There's something, there's one thing above all things that we do that has worked for us. It doesn't necessarily gonna work for you, but I'm gonna try and share that today. And um, it's really helped us out quite a bit. So anybody of any practice uh, amount of years or experience could probably um, agree with it. And if they're not doing, they might be able to use it come Monday morning, right? Because I'm a very simplistic person, I really, do this. I go in the office and I uh, converse with people and I adjust them. And I converse with people and I adjust them. And I converse with people and I adjust them. And that's basically my job. It's all my job is. And I try and get rid of any other job that I have. Because my job is uh, I'm a chiropractor. And I want to inspire people. And I want people to come in and see me. But I don't want to have to do this. I don't want to have to ever call a person and tell them that they missed an appointment. So we never call anybody. I never want to have to ask anybody to bring their child in because I wanted to provide such a good service that they brought their child in before I even asked. I don't want to have to do any marketing whatsoever. I don't want to have to do any screenings, any dinners. I don't want to ever have to do that again in my life, and I haven't done it for at least 27 years. I just don't want to have to do that because I want to be so good when I talk to my people that they get the idea of what I'm talking about and they just naturally come in. And that would be a great thing because that's what makes my life sustainable. You know, if you're gonna see a high volume, you gotta take away, get rid of all the other stuff in your, you know, I'm not a CA. I'm not a CA, I'm not a marketer. I'm just Kevin Jackson and I talk to people and I adjust people. So I'm gonna try and give you one thing that I found that worked for me that may or may not be right for you, but it might be right for someone out here. So it's gonna be very simplistic. So what is the one thing that we can do for our fellow chiropractor? And honey, can I get a water, please? So what is one thing that we could do to help our fellow chiropractor to up his game? I mean, if we're gonna take the population of the United States, and someone has theorized before that we see 7% of the population, how would we go about seeing 14% of the population, right? We'd either have to have double the amount, thank you, Sam, I appreciate that. That's right, honey. We would either have to have double the amount of chiropractors, right, if we're gonna double the population, or people would have to, a chiropractor would have to start seeing double the amount of people, right? That's why volume becomes, or increasing your volume. It's not right that everybody sees 1,000 a week. It might be right that someone sees 150 people a week. But if they're seeing 70 a week and they saw 140 a week, they would be doing something favorable for chiropractic. See, I don't look at it as something favorable for me. I'm not trying to get anything out of it. I'm just trying to reap the rewards of being a good chiropractor. I'm not trying to get new patients. I hate when I hear that. Someone comes, uh, you know, they, they say, I got some new ones. You didn't get anything. You gave, you gave something that in return, you had the opportunity to see someone, a blessing to see someone in your office. I'm not getting, I'm not trying to sign someone up on a $2,500 care plan so I can lock them in, so then I can take their money and fund my lifestyle, and then I can take the pictures and put it on Facebook. That's not what I'm all about. You know, that's not gonna give me fulfillment and sustainability in the long term. In fact, has nothing to do with anything. 
So there's one thing that we can do for our fellow chiropractor, and it's not to show them how to get more new patients. All right? It's not to show them how to open a deal and close a deal. It's not to show them how to you know, lock someone in. That's just not it. But there is something we can do, <clears throat> and it's called arousal. Right? But not like Jimmy was talking about. It's not sexual arousal. In fact, Jim, stand up for us. Now that's arousing right there. Now if you, if you look at that, that is, that is arousal. Now when, now when Jimmy goes into his office, he may arouse other men. Like, you know, that might be his way. But what I'm, what, what I'm talking about, what... What I'm talking about arousing is something different, okay? Now, I want you to remember that term arousal, arousal, okay? I told you this is going to be a simplistic talk, arousal, okay? Here's what we don't want to arouse. We don't want to arouse financial pressure. And what I mean by that is have someone listen to our talk, sit them down, and say, now, if you're very serious about chiropractic, you're going to pay up front, I don't want to, and I'm not saying that's wrong at all, at all, not at all, but that arouses a certain pressure, and I'm not about pressure, because that's an outside-in type approach. I'm into the inside-out type approach. So I don't want to arouse fear in someone. I don't want to say that subluxation's going to kill you, and you need to bring your kids in, because subluxations kill. I'm not going to say that, because I don't operate out of fear. What I want to do is I want to arouse the realization of a greater innate in them. So get this, guys. Get this. My job when a person is in my presence or my wife's presence, either at the, consul, uh, the lay lecture that she does or the table talk that I do, my job is to arouse within that person the possibility of what innate has in store for them, the possibility of their body healing on its own without the use of drugs, the possibility of the ADHD being controlled, the possibility of their body. And this alone, if you can get really good at this, if you can get to the point where you can arouse the realization in a person that there's something greater inside them, you won't have to do another spinal screening. You won't have to do a dinner. You won't have to do a lock-in right up front. I'm not saying there's anything wrong with those. I've done them all, done them, done them, done them, but I don't have to do them anymore. There's been a certain freedom that we came into once we started to realize what it is when someone becomes, you know, realizes about their innate intelligence in them. Now, no one that I've ever come across has known the term innate like we know it patient off the street. But everybody knows, I haven't met anybody, any patient who didn't know what their innate, intelligent, innate intelligence was once I explained it. Like if I said, Becky's mom, Maggie, if I said, if you cut yourself, it's going to heal on its own, you could agree with that, right? That's called agreement. There's no one ever in the history of our office that didn't agree that they had an innate intelligence within them. That's how simple this can get down to. That a child uh, that the mother's holding came from a sperm and an egg, and there was a wisdom that grew that entire child, and that that same wisdom can heal their ear infection. No one has disagreed with that ever. No one has ever disagreed with the discussion that this innate intelligence runs through the nervous system in the form of mental impulses. That innate intelligence can also be called life. And if you have enough guts, you can call innate intelligence or life God in your office. And you get to people to that level of thinking that where they feel it's a blessing to be adjusted because the God that's within them, I'm not talking Jesus Christ, I'm just talking about the physical manifestation of God, which is your body, can actually work up to its God-given ability. And that's really cool. Because that's when people come in and talk about their miracles and the desire to get off drugs and the desire to want to bring their kids in. And, and next you know, another week goes by and there's another 15 new patients. 
and there was 15 new patients, and I didn't have to look for new patients. I didn't have to get anybody. I didn't have to lock anybody in. I didn't have to play any games. I could just express myself in its totality. So this inborn intelligence, this innate, this God within, is far more powerful than any vitamin. I'll let them know that. It's far more powerful than any exercise program. Because a lot of times what we do accidentally is we tell a patient about multiple philosophies at once. We want to get them all dialed in on a whole wellness type gamut. And there's, again, there's nothing wrong with that. But by the time the person leaves, they have multiple philosophical ideas coming into them. They're not sure what would heal them. Is it going to be the C, the exercise, the adjustment, an accumulation of all of them? But my job as a chiropractor is to make it very clear as to what is doing the healing where that healing comes from, how they're going to access it. My job is to get them aroused about realizing a greater innate within. And then to bring this innate forward for them. Let them know that an adjustment actually brings your innate intelligence forward for you. Now here's the problem here. Some people just can't adjust. Some people's skill level is not that good that they can't make a specific scientific chiropractic adjustment, and so the innate doesn't come forward. There isn't a change. So I challenge everybody to get really good at their particular technique and focus on their technique. Focus on getting, on listening to that voice within. I remember Sigafus used to do this. He'd say, you don't need any help from me. You don't need any information. In fact, you have too much. What I really want you to do is I want you to go into the woods for two hours a day and just sit and listen, and listen within, and learn about yourself, and learn about others, and learn about nature, and forget all this advice that you hear, all these things that you need to do. You need to actually do less instead of doing more. You need to think less instead of thinking more. You need to read less and listen more. Come on, man. You can actually walk into your office and be a different person on Monday based on saying, I'm going to get people to become aroused about the realization. And every conversation that you have with a person circles back to that whole idea. That's why, to me, the deal is this. My job in the morning is to get clear. I get up in the morning, and I sit there. And I've got it down to a science now where I don't need much time. I just need a cup of coffee from my dear wife. She gets up, goes downstairs, brings the coffee up for me, and I just sit in bed, usually with my white lab, and I get connected with my innate. <clears throat> That's my first job. It's just get clear with who I am, what I am. And uh, when I go into the office, I do not have any pre-planned mission for anybody. I'm a blank page at that point. And basically what I'm going to do, I don't have any scripts, I don't have any, I used to give out scientific studies. I thought that was the key. I did everything, right? And I'm not condemning that either. It has a certain value to it. But telling someone, here's a scientific study, and saying, see, they say it's okay, is actually not as effective as taking a mother and saying to that mom, hey, mom, wake up, okay? There's an intelligence within you that heals you. And when she goes home at night and she's thinking about her child as being sick, and I didn't sign, try and sign her up on some program, I'm just letting her have free will to do whatever she wants, five minutes, she will probably say, I'm going to bring my son in to see him for the ear infections, or I'm going to bring my children in just to get checked anyways. What it is is I want freedom in practice, guys. Freedom. I want sustainability. I don't have to do anything anymore. I just want to show up and have people come to where I am because it's so specialized with what I do. That's why the scripting is not important to me. At one point, I tried it. I tried the scientific studies, like I said. But nowadays, I have to meet each person where they're at for who they are. And if my innate is connecting with them, there's no script needed. I can't manufacture something. I just met you, Maggie. I can't have a script that says, tell Maggie this. But I can say, Maggie, you know, you can feel my love and my int intention. Right? All I want to do, Maggie, is set you free. I just want to adjust you and make you a better person. That's my mission in life. 
So the deal is this, if you can grasp that, if you can grasp that idea, if you can take this idea and pass it on to people, <clears throat> from one individual to the next, every time you see someone, you're circling back with your table discussions about that realization of an innate that's greater within them, you will have no worries as a chiropractor ever again. People will be lining up. Um, on a Saturday morning, see, I work six days a week. And the reason I work six days a week is because I get my enjoyment out of working six days a week. And my wife said I can be off on Saturdays, but I still don't take off on Saturdays because I work for 60 minutes on Saturdays and I see 70 people in 60 minutes. And that's not bragging, it's not anything. I could give a crap who sees what. But here's the deal, on a Saturday when I walk in, people are lined up to get in. It's like going to your favorite bakery. I get there Saturday, they're willing to wait 20 minutes, a half hour, and they're willing to pay cash on the spot each time they come in. Is that right for everybody? No, it's not right for everybody. But what it is, is someone along the line, somewhere along the line, these people learned something powerful they're getting from the adjustment. We do not call them. We do not encourage them to come in. We don't sign them up. We, they just come because of the understanding of a greater innate within. I hope that helps someone. Thank you.